What's up, guys? Welcome to day one of our adventures in Japan. Before I start the travel vlog, I would like to thank Dash or the Japan America Society of Hawaii for sponsoring this trip. They were the ones who gave us this opportunity to experience Japan's culture and traditions on a deeper scale. Just a brief summary we had to compete in the Japan Wizards competition in order to win this airfare ticket. There were a total of 126 students who represented 25 high schools from Oahu. Hawaii, Maui, and Kauai at the 14th Annual Japan Wizards Statewide Academic Team Competition on Saturday, February 25, 2017 at KCC. These teams comprised of three students each, with a total of 42 teams. The teams were tested on their knowledge of various Japan-related topics such as art, culture and tradition, food, geography, history, Japan-Hawaii ties, literature, politics and government, sports, contemporary Japan, and of course, language. These students were divided into two levels, level A or level B, depending on their current Japanese language level. Level A students are enrolled in Japanese 1 or 2, level B students are enrolled in Japanese 3 or 4. Hence, I'm proud to say that our team, Mid-Pacific Team Level A, has dominated this competition by scoring 240 points out of 300 points possible. Additionally, we were given the Atsuhiko Tatsuchi Memorial Award for Outstanding Scholarship and were recognized as reigning champions for 2017. Well, let's get on to our adventure, shall we? Welcome back! We've arrived at Hanada Airport and will be taking a train to Shiba Park Hotel. Before that, we decided to stack up on some goods before we crash. Here are some photos of the 7-Eleven by our Shiba Park Hotel. They've literally got everything you want, from creamy ice cream to hot manapuas. Hotel's infrastructure was well designed and the lobby was aesthetically pleasing. The best part was that their hotel was in the heart of Tokyo and it gave us access to four major subway and train stations. For convenience, they even had their own restaurant by the lobby. Unfortunately, we had to save money in order to visit different locations so we had to eat convenience store food in the mornings.
so how does it look guys? Not too shabby for our first day, right? What's up guys? Second day in Tokyo, Japan and we just left the Shiba Park Hotel. We're heading to Shuga Shrine and uh, it's gonna be a wonderful day. Hey Cody, how'd you sleep last night? Um, kind of jet lagged. What about you guys? Jet lagged. I woke up like three and couldn't go back to sleep. Wow. <laughs> Here we go. We are at the famous staircases where Mitsuha and Haki from Your Name met. For those of you who aren't familiar with this film, Your Name was a super popular 2016 Japanese animated film adapted and directed by Makoto Shinkai. The total revenue for this film was approximately 354 million US dollars. We are now at Shuga Shrine. To give you a brief description, before the Meiji era, there had been a Gozu Tenno Shrine and an Inari Shrine. Later, those two shrines were enshrined together to become known as the Shuga Shrine. In Japanese mythology, when Susano no Mikoto defeated the eight-headed serpent, he said, here I come, I feel Shuga Shuga Shi. Shuga Shrine was named after this anecdote. On the ceiling of the shrine, there are pictures of the 36 great poetic geniuses of the Heian era. They are designated as Shinjuku's most important cultural properties. Now let us begin our search for the Meiji Shrine. Invincible. On our way to Meiji Shrine, we actually caught a few Pokemon. And here's the first Pokestop we got to. Okay, Cody, talk about Meiji uh, Emperor. Um, well, the old emperor died around the same time as the shogun died, and that was a um, time of unrest in Japan. And um, basically what happened was the shogun launched the second Choshu expedition 
um, actually it's the Ochogun Lunch Trekking Toshu Expedition, and then when that failed, um, the Shogun lost a lot of power, and then the country split into the um, two sides, the um, pro-emperor side, and then the pro-shogun side, and then um, when the shogun, um, so the shogun lost power after the battle of Tabo Fushimi, um, and then basically that's when, um, or that's when they could, um, that's when the emperor officially got power, but technically the shogun stepped out earlier. Yet they still had the war in order to crush all um, shogun remnants. And then um, by the end of that time, they were able to um, instate um, Emperor Meiji as the true ruler of Japan. What up guys, we are now at the inner sanctum of the Meiji Shrine. This is a Shinto shrine that is dedicated to the deified spirits of Emperor Meiji and his wife Empress Shoken. The shrine actually does not contain the Emperor's grave, which is located at Fushimi Momoyama south of Kyoto. After the Emperor's death in 1912, the Japanese Diet passed a resolution to commemorate his role in the Meiji Restoration. And this is how Meiji Shrine came to be. Here are some hundred year old bonsai trees that are older than both my grandma and grandpa combined. The term bonsai is a Japanese art form using trees grown in containers. Similar practices also exist in other cultures including the Chinese tradition of bonsai, from which the art originated from. Put it simply, the Chinese grew baby trees and restricted their growth by putting them into small containers to be presented as a form of art. I respected this 500 year old bonsai tree so much that I had to take a picture of it individually. Here we found Meiji Shrine's Pokestop and a high volume of Pokemon nearby. This is a picture I took with the Pokemon Go app and I invite you to beat that photo. Look at how happy that bear is. Here are a few picks of wine and sake that are trapped in barrows in the Meiji Forest. Alright, I guess our trip to the Meiji Shrine is now finished. Let's head on over to Shibuya. Look at this guy, he's like saying, HOLD IT DOWN HOMIE! First stop in Shibuya, the Hachiko Memorial Statue. Oh, if you don't know the story of Hachiko, here it is. Hachiko was a dog born on a farm near the city of Odate, Akita Prefecture. He is remembered for his remarkable loyalty to his owner. 
which is continued for more than nine years after his owner's death. For nine years, he waited for his owner at this station, this very station, Shibuya Station, until he passed away. We are now at Shibuya Crossing. Over hundreds of thousands of people cross here every single day. This area is known as one of the fashion centers of Japan, particularly for young people and as a major nightlife area. Unfortunately, we could only capture footage during the day, but I promise you, Shibuya Crossing at night is filled with five times as many people as of now. What's up? I'm currently in the busiest cities and main streets of Shibuya. There were many pathways that you could have entered in Shibuya and this was one that I chose. Here's the view of it and you can see there's a massive Don Quixote that you can shop at and there's also many items available such as standard products including groceries, electronics, and clothing. So this is definitely not your average store. Prepare to be amazed as the interior is full of exciting colors and sounds and the inventory is packed from floor to ceiling. In addition, Don Quixote is one of the largest chain stores with over 270 locations throughout Japan. I believe this Don Quixote has around 7 floors of goods and merchandise. But the amazing thing is that this reminds me of Walmart or your average Costco in Japan. Here you can find various types of Sanrio merchandise, and here's a cool lighting from the stairs. We were planning to go to the Ghibli Museum, however we did not get our tickets in time, so if you are planning to go, then you must get them one month in advance, and I would suggest ordering them online. Before this trip, I was researching online, watching YouTube videos, and I found that one of the delicious ice cream shops or really creative flavors were located in Nakano Broadway so here we are. These are some egg toy machines and you'll find them really common in Japan. They have a set price and you have to input that in order for it to turn. You smile. Is this your heaven Cody? Oh yeah. Huh? Candy show. What smile? Just keep on smiling. Okay. Hi Cody. <laughs> this is Cody's heaven. Oh my god. Well, we finally arrived at this ice cream shop. This is actually called Daily Chico if you guys want to check it out. They have a total of eight flavors and three different sizes. I chose the super, super, super big size. My size was supposed to be shared with three to four people. You'll see what I mean. So after enjoying this lovely masterpiece, we decided to go to Waseda University. This is a private research institution located in Shinjuku. From there, we went on to Sensoji Temple. This is an ancient Buddhist temple located in Asakusa, Tokyo, Japan. It's Tokyo's oldest temple and one of its most significant. The Sensoji Canon Temple is dedicated to Guan Yin, the Buddhist goddess of mercy. And this is the most widely visited spiritual site in the world with over 30 million visitors annually. How cool is that? I forgot to mention, once you walk through that massive gate, 
you'll see many stores that sell authentic Japanese food and different souvenirs that you can take home such as the red bean pancake dorayaki. There's also one that is a samurai sword, but I'm not sure if you can take that on the airplane. Some more information about Sensoji is that it's the focus of Tokyo's largest and most popular festival, Sanja Matsuri, and this takes place in late spring. So I recommend you to check it out, and it takes approximately an hour to visit the stores and the temple. So you know what was pretty funny? It was rumored that breathing smoke from this structure would make your dreams come true. So this guy right here took it all in. I followed him, but fumes were way too strong. Here's the inside view of the temple. I'm gonna show you how to use this machine coming right up. So you need to put 100 yen to this thing, shake that thing up, pick out a stick, and it would give you a number, you match that number to a paper. That paper will show you your fate. Next up, we have Akihabara, the heaven and best area for electronic goods, video games, anime, manga, and computer goods. If you are an otaku, this is your paradise. If you don't know what this means, it's actually a secret gang created by the Japanese to undermine the Americans. I'm just kidding. Otaku, by definition, supported by Bing, is a young person who is obsessed with computers or particular aspects of popular culture to the detriment of their social skills. Well, here in Akiba, you can buy literally anything. From figurines to anime to manga, you can even give your girlfriend a figurine that she would love. Here we are at another Don Quixote with 8 floors of fun and entertainment. On the 8th floor you can find lots of gambling stations which you might enjoy. And there's even a maid cafe here. In maid cafes, waitresses dressed in maid costumes act as servants and treat customers as masters or mistresses in a private home rather than as cafe patrons. I know this may sound weird, however it's an interesting culture that should be respected. Here is the arcade of Don Quixote. Hey young man, konnichiwa. Oh, you blocked my camera? That kid with the red shirt blocked my camera. So I had to go to another arcade to record. We were cool though. We shook hands and said our sayonaras. As you can see, this arcade is packed with many games, but the detrimental effect is the smell of cigarettes from smokers. Kiba Island is another place where you can gamble, smoke, and chill even more. I do not respect the people who do this, but hey, do what you love, right? However, do the things that benefit yourself, not just to look cool. Finally, I see this guy who's spending his money like a rich man. I forgot to mention that in Akiba, we split up to shop and eat, but we had to make our way back by 8. These are some figurines and CDs from a selection of anime shows. On the second floor, there are various types of trading cards including Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and Dragon Ball Z.
shop sell their cards individually, so they may have the card that you want to buy. However, the price is very high as a result. Now please enjoy the rest of our adventures in Akiba to your heart's content without me talking. See you at our next destination, the Tokyo Skytree. Hey guys, welcome to the Tokyo Skytree. It's around 9 p.m. and it seems that we are the last visitors to this attraction. This is a view from the inside of the elevator. You see you have the cherry blossoms to your left and a TV screen on top of you. The cool thing about this is that they have a clear view of the elevator when it gets up to 450 feet, which you have to pay a thousand yen to do, and you'll see that next.
ゆりなどを挟まれないようにご注意ください足元の段差にご注意ください足元の段差にご注意ください,ださい,ださい Here's the view from the Tokyo Sky Tree at 350 feet. Let me give you a short overview of the Tokyo Sky Tree. So, this Sky Tree is a broadcasting restaurant and observation tower in Sumida, Tokyo. It became the tallest structure in Japan in 2010 and reached its full height of 634 meters in March 2011, making it the tallest tower in the world. Displacing the Canton Tower and the second tallest structure in the world after the Khalifa. Right here, we have a touchscreen application that shows you all the landmarks and locations that you are currently seeing, and you can just tap right into it, it'll give you the details and all the information that you need. Currently, I believe the Attack on Titan series is teaming up with the Tokyo Sky Tree to become more creative in establishing the slogan Attack on Sky Tree, hence, attracting more customers and generating more income. If you know what this event is about, please leave a comment in the comment section and I'd be delighted to know about it. Here's a picture of us being photogenic at the Tokyo Sky Tree. The sounds that you are hearing now are from the characters inside the series Attack on Titans.
slided pathway leads us to the elevator that takes us up to the 450 feet observational deck which we can purchase for a thousand yen and we already did so we're heading there now This sound is way too dramatic. This sound, it's like someone's gonna die. I know, right? In your mind, you might be thinking, why is this music so dramatic? Well, that's the music of all anime. Oh, this is the max right here. Okay, this guy you see right behind us is the protagonist character Eren Jaeger inside the Attack on Titan series. He's basically the hero that becomes the King Titan that tries to save his friends and family inside the wall. Ahead are some of the artwork that were drawn by the fans of the anime. Chill, man. He's got to chill. A design that was pretty cool was how they made the Colossal Titan's height exactly the same as what we are currently at, which is 451 feet on the observatory deck. Yay, finally guys, we reached the top of the Tokyo Sky Tree. Now we are heading back down to the gift shop. <laughs> yeah, jump on that. Here we have the Tokyo Sky Tree restaurant. It's quite expensive, but I mean it's a great spot for friends, couples to enjoy a nice meal with a great view on a lovely night. So I'll definitely do it if I had the time. Ooh yeah, enjoy that shit.
Alright guys, this concludes our first day adventures in Tokyo. If you have any questions about this trip, leave it in the comment section. Subscribe and thanks for being awesome. I'll see you on day two of our Hagi adventures. This is only the beginning.